Okay, good afternoon, everyone. I'm delighted to welcome you to this webinar. I'm Brian Sloan. I'm the current chair of the Cambridge Socio Legal Group, and it's a great pleasure we have Davide Luca from the Department of Land Economy here to talk to us today. Just before we start, I thought it would be useful for those of you who aren't on our mailing list to have some details about how to subscribe to that, and I'll put it in the chat. I've also given a link to our latest edit collection called Spaces of Care. Davida, I think it was David Howard who put you in the hot seat today, so you can blame him for the invitation, but I'm sure it's going to be an excellent webinar. Just as a matter of housekeeping, there is going to be significant opportunity to ask questions and David is going to respond to them after he finishes speaking. One way to ask a question is to use the Q&A box and to type your question. If, however, you would prefer to ask your question live, just indicate that to us and we'll try our best to unmute you. But we don't need to worry about that until after the main presentation. So, Davida, you're going to talk for about 35 minutes, and I'm very much looking forward to hearing what you've got to say. So with that, over to you on the topic of Gone with the Wind, Organised Crime, and the Geography of Wind Farms in Italy. Thank you very much. Uh, thanks, Brian. Thanks for the, the invite to the Cambridge Social Legal Group. Uh, let me start sharing my presentation. And uh, welcome everyone again. Thanks for being here, for, uh, for tuning in. Today I'm presenting joint work with uh, Alessio Romari, um, a PhD student from the University of Barcelona, who is probably uh, listening to us and he's also on the job market. So uh, it's, uh, it's an eye to everyone looking for a, for a, for a new person. Um, so let me start directly um, with, uh, with jumping directly in the topic. And, the topic, of course, is uh, the transition towards uh, so uh, the, the, the the policies that can foster the transition towards renewable energy sources, and uh, we know, of course, that the renewables play a leading role in the transition towards more carbon neutral uh, sources of energy, and uh, and 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 it's, uh, it plays a key role in a, in a, in achieving our uh, carbon net or carbon neutral targets, for, such as the those in the, set in the in the Paris Agreement. Uh, to this aim, uh, policies such as uh, public subsidies are becoming increasingly popular or have become popular in this, uh, in this last years, in the last uh, perhaps 20 years, if we want, uh, to the point that the renewable energy subsidies today are, are a key component in, a, in, a, in budgets around the world. Uh, just for, uh, for your information here, you can see some infographics uh, borrowed from the Financial Times and you see that the, the subsidies for renewable energy is, uh, are very, very spread across the world. Uh, interestingly, uh, among the top countries, at least according to the Financial Times, there, are, there is Germany, the US, and Italy is in the third place. Um, these subsidies are still overall smaller than the subsidies uh, given to fossil fuel. Uh, so this is, uh, provides us uh, with food for thought, but nevertheless have become a, an important component in the in the policy toolkit that the governments around the world use. In the case of Italy, uh, these subsidies, the, the, the uptake of subsidies was very important. Indeed, if we look at the generation from uh, renewable energy sources in the last, uh, let's say, uh, 30 years, there was a, in a way, there was a, I'm telling you a story of success. Uh, I'm just uh, uh, showing you here, underlining the, the the, 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 the energy from wind and from solar. And you see that uh, since the start uh, the, of the 2000s, which more or less coincides uh, uh, with, uh, with, uh, with the adoption of incentive schemes, there was a massive uptake in, uh, in, in capacity. Uh, just as a comparison, I'm also providing two graphs for a, a hydroelectric um, um, on the bottom right of the, of the, of the graph. Hydroelectric was already at the maximum capacity in the country, so that's why you, you don't see it growing. Uh, but overall, what I want to stress here is that the, 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 the use of subsidies was as highly successful in, uh, in the Italian case as in other cases in other countries. 
uh, yet there is a sort of a growing dark spot in the story, and this is what the presentation is going is going to uh, is going to be about. And uh, I'm linking, of course, as you can understand from the title and from the from the abstract, uh, to the link the potential uh, involvement of mafia groups, also of organized crime. Uh, in the in the sector in the renewable energy sector, um, here just to provide you some uh, anecdotal evidence, I'm uh, I'm uh, showing you some uh, headlines uh, from the Washington Post, from the FT, uh, the Telegraph. But the list is broader. There is uh, uh, and and all these uh, these uh, pieces of news uh, connect to uh, is particular some cases which were discovered in uh, in southern Italy in the region of Sicily an island that you you probably know already um, the evidence is not only journalistic there is also there's uh, reports for example by the by Europol the European um, as well as by the uh, Italian uh, anti-mafia directorate so there is a growing uh, evidence, although still not uh, uh, broadly, is uh, is still anecdotal or case by case evidence of this uh, potential involvement of, uh, of mafia groups into into renewable energy. Uh, to give you the last piece of uh, of uh, anecdotal evidence, here I'm. Uh, it's uh, these uh, these uh, headlines is uh, was linked to the arrest of a of a wind farm tycoon, so a businessman who. Uh, seem to have links, very close link to the, the, the current um, uh, head of, of the Sicilia Mafia, so Cosa Nostra, which you may remember from, uh, from the Godfather, just to, to, give you, to give you an idea. And uh, when he was arrested, he was, uh, his, um, uh, the, the, the police seized uh, assets for 1.3 billion euros. So we are talking about substantial sums or substantial economic involvements in the in the in the sector, um, so what uh, our research, the research that um, uh, I'm conducting with Alessio, is uh, is exactly trying to uh, aim at understanding if there is a strong and systematic link between the presence of mafia uh, or mafia groups at the municipal level, so at the local level. Uh, municipalities in Italy are the lower tier of government, so it's. Uh, uh, if, uh, if there is a mafia presence in the, at the local level, it correlates or causally uh, is causally linked to the to the involvement in the uh, wind farm activities. Um, and if so, this is a, the, the second question is in red because it's a, it's a question that you will see is still work in progress. If there is a link, what are the mechanisms behind? Uh, just to uh, before uh, I move on into the analysis, let me say that uh, you, you may think, uh, 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 well, okay, this is a, a case from Italy, but what's the external validity? What's the relevance for other contexts? And uh, and here I want to stress that the the organized crime is not only an Italian problem, or especially nowadays. Uh, here, just for uh, as a, as a, as a, as, a, as food for thought, I'm uh, providing two uh, headlines from uh, both from the Guardian and uh, and they are about the organized crime in the UK. Uh, here, of course, I'm, uh, the headlines are about the, a broad definition of organized crime, so it doesn't only involve mafia type organized crime. So it's uh, any sort of a criminal gangs and uh, and, and groups. Uh, but uh, the point I want to make is that. Uh, uh, Criminal organizations are not only an issue that we need to be concerned in, in countries such as Italy uh, or, or some countries in the Balkans, but it's a, it's a broad phenomenon link, uh, or nowadays spread all across Europe and, and in the UK. Uh, just to give you a, a, a sum, uh, the, 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 the Crown uh, Prosecution Service or in, in the UK estimates, I was reading uh, the, the estimations, and they, they estimate that the costs for the UK are in excess of 24 billion pounds a year. So we are talking about substantial a substantial issue. Um, more specifically linked to the presentation today is the issue of mafia groups. So mafia organized crime, which is a specific type of organized crime, as a, a criminologist will, will tell us. And the point here I want to raise is that the uh, mafias today, and I will come back to this later, are, have become a global phenomena. So they are not the, 
the, the, the small phenomena, so the, the small mobster that you can imagine looking at the, the Godfather or the kind of movies, so where they were slowly linked to specific places using violence, etc. Today they are a global uh, uh, phenomena frequently infiltrating into the, into the clean quote unquote economy. And, uh, and to the same, the UK is indeed to be very careful because uh, the UK indeed is a, is a global center for money laundering. So organized criminal groups frequently uh, earn money illicitly, but then they reinvest it illicitly or they, by laundering it into, into the legal economy. And um, just to give you an insight, this is a, 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 a story from, uh, from 2009. Uh, in 2009, there was an arrest of, a, of, a, of, a, of an Italian mobster and, uh, and the, 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 the raids, which were conducted between Italy and the UK, seized uh, 227 properties, 680 bank accounts, 61 luxury cars, stables, horses, uh, businesses in the worth over 200 million pounds. So we are talking about something which is a increasingly deeply rooted in the uh, economic and social uh, cloth of, of societies beyond where uh, beyond the, the, the places where organized crime uh, developed in the first place, such as uh, places uh, in, uh, in southern Italy or elsewhere in the world. Um, in terms of literature, our paper uh, tries to bridge two strands. Uh, in a way, we both me and Alessio comes from a background in, uh, in applied economics, so uh, people more from the from the law side of the uh, sciences will forgive us for the, why the literature is focused on the, on these areas. Uh, but uh, just to give you the idea, we are trying to bridge the literature on the economics of organized crime, and here there is a very broad uh, and burgeoning amount of research showing how organized crime and mafia type organized crime uh, is a, is a, is a, inflicts a significant substantial cost to, uh, to economies around the world and frequently to public policy. So this is a, 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 um, an important focus. And we try to connect this to the, to the broader debate in public policy, but one could think about a debate in, a, in legislation uh, or in regulation to, to get closer to a, to a, a legalistic uh, framework on whether, on how to foster the transition towards uh, renewable energies and towards a cleaner economy. So we try to bridge these two strands uh, on which uh, there has been relatively limited work. We just know of uh, three pieces of work, so there, there are a few exceptions, but it's a still a, it's a, a relatively untouched area where there is, a, there is more, more room for, uh, for, uh, for more research. Before I go into the, what we do empirically, uh, let me spend uh, one slide on the, uh, telling you a bit the background on how the incentive systems work in Italy, because this is then important to, to understand the empirical case. And um, as I was anticipating, uh, Italy has uh, benefited from a substantial amount of, uh, of public support towards the, uh, towards the, the wind farms, uh, to the point that in, uh, in the, some years ago, Italy had uh, the highest or perhaps close to the highest levels of support uh, across the EU, across uh, European countries. Uh, as an example, uh, the legislation uh, changed over time. So I won't go into specific details, but I want to give you the broader picture. And uh, uh, as an example, so in uh, the, 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 the Italian legislation, legislator uh, foresaw uh, some feeding tariffs guaranteed for years. So, uh, the tariffs were changed over time, as I was anticipating, but were very generous. So we are talking uh, uh, to, uh, about sums well above the market price for, for energy. And so there were stronger incentives uh, to, uh, to, uh, to, to join the sector. Um, other incentives were, for example, the priority access to the grid, uh, because um, this is something I discovered working on this project. Sometimes there is an overproduction of electricity and the electricity just wasted so the electricity that we produce is just wasted in in, in, a, it's a, in the network and uh, and so in this case um, the, the, the energy produced from uh, from wind farms have a preferential access to the, to the grid um, 
interestingly, uh, the incentives uh, were uh, somehow favoring uh, smaller plants or smaller uh, wind, farm, uh, wind farms. Uh, so for example, if a, if a farm is below 60 meg megawatts, uh, they doesn't need to comply and to go into a, a, a sort of auction system where there is a uh, where the the, the, the the participants will try to compete for a, a limited uh, amount of a, of, a, of capacity. Um, the graph that I'm showing you here is um, it's in Italia, so forgive me for this. It comes from the from the Italian. Uh, um, uh, um, institution that the manages these incentives but what I want you to to convey is, uh, is the the size of the horizontal bars and both for large scale uh, farms so the ones on the right so the, the above uh, 200 and kilowatts uh, or the small um, the small ones uh, so uh, the opposite, I mix them, uh, but in both cases, so the small, very small and large scale um, um, farms, the Italy ranks among the highest, uh, highest uh, support across the, across the, across the EU, and that's a main takeaway of the graph. Um, of course, is the, the product, well, of course, if you know the geography of Italy, the pro productability is, uh, of uh, wind farms is concentrated in the south, where the, the geography is, uh, is windier, uh, as you can see from, uh, from this map. Uh, unfortunately, this is also the area where uh, traditionally organized crime has been, or mafia type organized crime has been uh, strongest. Um, and in fact, uh, the uh, anti-mafia directorate of Italy, which uh, it might sound uh, strange for someone, but because of the long historical um, tradition of, of mafia groups, so the, 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 the rootedness of mafia groups, Italy has also developed a quite strong uh, um, institutional capacity in fighting those mafia groups. And so we have an anti-mafia directorate. Uh, and, uh, and in one of the, re the numerous reports, they were stressing, in fact, the, 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 the attention that we need to care to pay to the, the, the wind farms and renewable energy sector more broadly, because uh, this is a, one of the growing areas where mafias are, are trying to infiltrate. Uh, and the reasons are two. Um, the first one is that the, the, the mafia groups try to um, skim money from the incentives, so they uh, try to exploit the public incentives given to the sector. And the second, the second reason why mafias are interested in this sector is for the money laundering, because uh, establishing a wind farm requires uh, upfront capital. And this is a perfect way for, for, uh, for uh, groups which have uh, lots of cash and they don't know how to invest it. And, and that's a perfect opportunity for them to, to, uh, to, to use their cash. Uh, in terms of data, the data that we use for the for the for the analysis, we exploit um, a, a punctual um, data set on the on the presence of wind farms existing in 2016. So we this is a, a official data from the from the GSC Atlas, and here you can see um, a map on, on the distribution of, of of farms across Italy. And as I was saying, of course, mo most of them are in the south, which is windier, especially in the mountains of the south. If you are curious to see how many municipalities, as I was saying, the analysis will be done at the municipal level. Uh, here you can see uh, two scatter plots on the number of municipalities uh, across Italy that have uh, at least host at least one wind farm. Uh, on the left, uh, and the number of uh, plants per municipalities which are actually uh, having at least a farm. Um, Italy has composed of more or less uh, 8,000 municipalities, and uh, um, if I don't mistake, around 700 municipalities are involved in a, in a, in a wind farm, so have at least a wind farm in, in their own um, territory. Uh, now, let's come to the key point of the presentation, in the sense that the, the data on wind farms is easier, 
but the key point is uh, how do we measure mafia because it's uh, it's inherently difficult to pre to measure the, the the phenomenon you may tell me well this is a beautiful story but unless you tell me uh, how uh, you are able to measure the mafia the presence of mafia which is uh, by definition is uh, something difficult to find uh, the whole story is uh, is, uh, is just up in the air and um, uh, let me start from the the old from the first papers and uh, um, uh, that developed in the in the literature, and they used to uh, to use uh, indicators taken from the police or, or from the other uh, criminal uh, sources, and were mostly about the uh, um, violent uh, events. So we're trying to measure mafia presence by the by uh, by measuring, for example, the number of uh, crimes such as uh, homicides or uh, other crimes linked to the to uh, to mafia groups, and in a way, this links to the uh, view uh, of uh, mafias as violent uh, organizations as we may know from the movies. And that's why you see uh, here a picture from uh, from the Godfather, by the way, when the when the the character goes back to Sicily, um, and yet uh, organized crime groups are increasingly becoming. Uh, something different. So the, from uh, groups uh, exclusively focus on the crude violence, they are becoming increasingly infiltrated into, into the uh, legal economy, as I was anticipating before. And so the literature has also tried to keep up with this, uh, with this change. And, uh, and so new indicators have been added on the, on the toolkit of uh, empirical researchers. Uh, for example, um, scholars have used the number of uh, confiscated properties, uh, that is to say properties confiscated by the Italian state uh, to mafia groups, because uh, as I was saying, we have a, a relatively strong and developed uh, anti-mafia uh, institutional uh, structure to fight the groups. And equally, another indicator which was used is, uh, is the number of uh, uh, local authorities, that is municipalities in the Italian case, which were uh, found to be uh, infiltrated in mafia groups and, and dissolved because of this reason. Um, overall, so we see that the mafias have a change in their, in their character from uh, groups based on the, on the exclusively based on the cr on crude violence to groups more deeply infiltrated into, into society. Uh, Overall, yet the underlying uh, story of what the uh, or mafia groups are is the, the ultimate uh, use or, uh, or violence, either directly or, or, or as a threat. And uh, here I'm referring to a, a, a paper by one of the criminologists here in Cambridge, uh, uh, Federico Campana and, uh, and uh, Paolo Campana, sorry, and, uh, and Varese, uh, 2018. Um, Overall, what we do in this paper use, uh, is a, it's a, it's a combined um, um, it's a combined approach. We saw basically take all these uh, indicators used by, previously by the literature and 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 and, and combine an index uh, developed by an Italian organization called Transcrime. Uh, so the index ranges from zero to ten, where zero is uh, no mafia infiltration at all, and uh, uh, one hundred, sorry, not ten. Uh, one hundred is the maximum with a uh, maximum infiltration. Uh, to give you an idea, this is the, the picture uh, of, a, of a organized crime uh, today in Italy. Um, as I was saying uh, before, the, the, the criminal groups which developed historically in the South today are also highly infiltrated in, in cities and in, uh, in, in the North. In the, uh, and so cities like, such as Milan or Turin, the city where I'm from in the Northwest and other places which where the economy is formally very clean and then there is no, uh, in theory, no, no criminal groups, but they, they, they uh, influence on the economy is, uh, is, uh, is, uh, is strong. And this is, again, one of the reasons why we need to worry uh, also here in the UK, especially uh, in London. Uh, so what do we do empirically? Um, and I be please bear with me. This slide is, uh, is slightly more technical. So if uh, if you don't get uh, if you don't know estimation strategies, equation, there is absolutely no problems. Uh, it's uh, uh, it's um, it's important here is to understand the intuition. And since we have in a way we have two phenomena here, we need to understand. We need to understand whether 
a local municipality is uh, involved in, uh, in hosting at least a, a wind farm. So the first, uh, a first step and the second step, if yes, how many wind farms will be present in, a, in, a, in this uh, local uh, territory. So we use a, a, a two-step uh, analysis. Uh, it's a cross-section analysis because we only have data for 2019 on the, on the wind farms. And these two strange equations are just telling that, that we have a two-step where uh, we first estimate the, the, the likelihood of a municipality to host a wind farm and the second, uh, the number of plants or megawatts installed. In the first case, we use a probit estimator. In the second, a zero truncated Poisson, in case you are interested in, uh, in, uh, in these details. And uh, of course, our variable of interest, so our explanator, is, uh, is the, our mafia index. Um, we additionally, of course, control for covariates, as it's a standard in, the, in this kind of study. So first nature geography, uh, levels of urbanization, uh, in, in population density, income, unemployment, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, let me come to the results again. Don't get scared if you if you are not familiar with these tables. It's a uh, uh, it's um, it's just the way statistical results are presented. The important thing is uh, is the takeaway, and uh, a positive coefficient, so a positive number with uh, many stars with uh, three asterisks, is uh, what you want to have. So it's uh, what you don't want to have if you are concerned. But this. Uh, what uh, tells you that the regression results are strongly and robust. And so across our specification, you see in particular those underlined in red, they suggest us that there is a strong and robust link between uh, the presence of mafia groups at the local level and, and the likelihood of hosting at least a wind farm in the, in the municipality. And uh, of course, we cannot uh, uh, provide evidence of the smoking gun, but uh, because it's uh, but we can provide evidence of a link between these two, between the local presence of one phenomenon and the local presence of another phenomenon. Um, if we go to the second stage, so we try to estimate the total number of a wind farms per municipality. Again, we see there is strong and robust correlation between the two. Uh, this is, uh, of course, the, the results across the whole of Italy. Um, yet, there is no evidence of a link between uh, the total megawatts installed and, and mafias. And perhaps uh, this is uh, still a uh, very preliminary, but uh, an hypothesis because the, uh, the regulation that uh, is more stringent for large uh, wind farms. So an hypothesis we need to test uh, in a uh, in a more robust way is that the uh, mafia groups may be interested in entering into, into small farms. To give you an idea of what these coefficients are in a, in a graphical way, this is the, uh, a table. So you see the, 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 the link between the mafia index and the likelihood of, of hosting uh, wind farms. Um, the results holds or become stronger when we restrict the sample, when we see the analysis to the, only the south of Italy, where uh, <clears throat> the, 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 the presence of mafia groups have been historically stronger, and where also say the wind productivity is, uh, is stronger. Um, for reason of time, perhaps I will go very quickly to over the next slides, uh, but uh, if there is uh, any of you who is interested about the <clears throat> identification, the causal identification of the work, which is uh, the final part of our of our analysis, uh, we try to go deeper from the correlation analysis that I presented earlier. And what we do is that we use a, a, an instrumental variable approach. And basically, we exploit, uh, uh, to say, exogenous um, data or data or variables on the exogenous birth of mafia groups and in, the, in the 19th century to understand where mafia groups are today and hence find a way to uh, reduce the potential uh, endogenous link that we find in the, in the first part of the analysis. So what I, I will skip it, but I'm very happy to come back to this in the, in the Q&A. Uh, we use uh, data on, a, on, a, on a sulfur mines from the 19th century to instrument, as is uh, technically, the presence of mafia today, and hence uh, link it to the to the, the, the presence of, a, of, a, of wind farms. Uh, and what I want to, to show are the results 
And indeed, again, we find a very strong link. And here we, we can start to confidently claim it's a causal link between the presence of mafia in the municipality and the involvement in, a, in, a, in, a, in wind farms. And yet we don't find a, a link in the, in the second stage on so the number of uh, wind farms uh, hosted in each municipality. So this is, again, it's a, it's a hypothesis that we need to test further, but it's perhaps that the criminal groups may opt for small distributed farms rather than large scale um, <coughs> uh, plants. So to conclude, uh, we find, we test, we try to explore the correlation between uh, um, uh, the presence of mafia groups across Italy and the number of wind farms. And we do find preliminary evidence, uh, especially uh, from Sicily. Um, and this correlation is also strong in other parts of the South, uh, especially in the, in the other region of Campania, the region of Naples, so as to say, even if I, I haven't presented the result. Um, in terms of next step, uh, and uh, this is uh, something I haven't stressed before, the analysis is very new. So the, uh, in a way, uh, it's, a, it's a sort of preview of new, a new, new, new work we are still working on. And uh, we have still a lot to do on the, on the identifications, so on the empirical part, but especially we are now working on expanding the analysis to a solar plant, so to, uh, to try to diversify our focus or to broaden it. And especially we are going to start COVID allowing uh, very soon a second part of analysis, which will be qualitative on the mechanism, so on the more legalistic mechanism behind this, uh, this potential involvement of, uh, of mafia groups into, uh, into the renewable energy sector. With these, uh, thank you very much, and uh, I look forward for your uh, questions.